Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how you can draw your own really cute little bunny rabbit. So let's take a look at it. So this is what the bunny rabbit looks like. So you can applique it onto any project that you're working on, whether it's a pot holder like this, a baby quilt, an Easter table runner, whatever you want to do. All it is is two circles and these little funky ears up here. But let me show you how you can draw it really symmetrical, because that's the key. Because I can't draw worth a hoot, so I need all the help I can get. So here's your overall pattern. Now the height of this bunny is six inches, and it's three inches at its widest, widest point right there. So first, draw a six inch square with your ruler and then at the three inch mark on the side on each of the sides you're going to draw a line this is going right down the center draw another one going across this way now I have these little circle templates you can draw your own circles but this is a three inch circle I purchased these little templates at a fabric store. They're about 20 years old. They're a little beat up, but they still work. So place it in the lower half of your square and just line it up there in the center so you have it centered. And then go ahead and trace around it. And set that aside. Now take a two inch circle, place it right there in the center and you wanna move it a quarter of an inch below that center line, about a quarter of an inch, where it looks good to you. And then go ahead, whoops, and draw around that circle. Now to make the ears, let me show you how to do that. You're going to draw a rectangle and you're going to draw it one half inch wide and one and a quarter inches long. Okay, now you're going to go in at the bottom about an eighth of an inch and you're going to draw this line up towards the side about two-thirds of the way and stop. Do the same thing on this side. Two-thirds of the way and stop. Then come up a little bit from that and kind of draw a curved line. It doesn't have to be perfect. Your curved line. That makes it perfect. Whatever you like to do. And then go ahead and cut it out and this is your ear. Now I always draw all my templates onto thin cardboard or you can buy cardstock at a drugstore, grocery store, office supply. It's everywhere and they come in little packages of different colors. Okay so take your little ear and then place it on one side of that center line and you can point them in any direction you want. Okay, it, remember it's your rabbit. And then go ahead and trace around it. Then take it, I have a little tape on the end because it's easy to keep track of it. And then move it over to the other side and then trace around it. Okay, so now you have your bunny rabbit. So you want to go ahead and now cut around all of those curved lines and you should have a template that looks something like that. Okay, now the reason why you want to draw it onto cardstock is because it's easy to trace around it. If you draw it onto paper, it's going to be really hard to trace around it. And you can use this cardstock template over and over and over again. So. The next thing you want to do now is take your fusible web paper and I'm going to go over that. Now this fusible web comes in packages, 9 by 12 inch sheets, 5 sheets in a package. There's two sides to it. There's this plain pap one paper side there and on the other side is another sheet of paper but it has blue grid lines on it and that's the side that you draw on. Okay, so take your template after you've made it and just trace around it right on there. All right, after you've traced on it, you're going to cut it out of the sheet. But when you cut it out of the sheet, 
make sure you leave a little bit of space, about a quarter of an inch, all the way around. Don't cut on the, on the bunny lines just yet. Leave some space there. Now, I'm going to set this aside for just a second. Here is my fabric that I want to make the bunny out of. This is the front side of the fabric. You're going to put the bunny uh, applique web on the back side. So before you can do that, you want to take the plain paper off of the back. Make sure the glue is still sticking on the other paper. If you're having a hard time getting that paper to come off, then just score it, bend it, and a corner usually will pop up. So pull all of that paper off and then set it down on the back side of your fabric and finger press it down. Now take your scissors, usually it's, I advise using small scissors, now go ahead and cut on all of these drawn lines, okay? And when you're done, this is what it should look like, okay? All right, now, on the back is still this grid line paper. Now we're gonna take that off in just a second, but let me show you what you need to do. Now, here is my background fabric. So whatever background fabric you choose to do, you're gonna put it on the front side, the prettiest side of your fabric. See how this is much lighter here? Don't put it there. Put it on the front side of your fabric. Now, re to remove this paper, you gotta just pull it off. But if you're having a hard time, again, getting it off, don't forget to score it with a straight pin, bend it and pull it off, and the glue is now attached to the fabric. Go ahead and pull this all off, then lay it down onto your background fabric. Now, don't finger press it down just yet. Just place it there. And if it's off center, you don't like the way it looks, you can still lift it up and place it back down again. Once you've got it the way you like it, finger press it real, real good all over it. Okay, now go to your ironing board. Do not do this on your cutting mat, okay? Otherwise, your cutting mat's probably gonna melt. So we don't wanna do that. So do this at your ironing board. You're gonna take a damp cloth and place it over your applique. Now, I usually just keep a spray bottle next to my iron and I just spray it down till it's damp, okay? Or you can go to your sink and get it wet, but I, I like my spray bottle better. Now read the instructions on your package of fusible web so you know how long to press your iron on it. So you're gonna use a hot iron with steam. You're gonna set it down. Now this iron is a small iron and it covers the entire applique. All right, so hold it there, give it a little burst of steam, hold it down for whatever number of seconds it says, 12 to 15 seconds is probably what it's gonna say, and then you are done. It is now permanently fused on to your background fabric. Now, I usually let this cool down before I do my little app machine applique stitches. So, let's go over applique stitches, okay? Now, all of the sewing machines that are manufactured recently have some type of decorative stitching on it. Very few come with just a straight stitch anymore. So most of the machines do have something called a satin stitch. My machine has a, medi a small, a medium, and a large stitch. This is a very popular stitch to use on machine applique. For this bunny that I did, I used the medium one right there. But also look on your machine to see if there are other types of stitches that you could use on the edge of applique patterns that you choose to create. So after you've applied and permanently fused it onto your fabric, you want to take either tear away stabilizer, which you can buy in rolls, or you can use this really thin paper, and this thin paper is very inexpensive. You can purchase it at a hardware store. Now this is just a 
a, a narrow roll of it. This is only six inches wide. But I was at the hardware store the other day and you can not only get it in six inch width, but 12 inch, 18 inch, 24 inch. And so if you have a really large applique pattern, you can get it pretty big. So you would go ahead and do your decorative stitching. So let's look at this one again. So here's that medium stitch I used around the entire edge. After you're done doing your applique stitches around the bunny, then you want to tear away whatever stabilizer you put back here. And it comes off really, really easy. It's, it's not a chore at all to, to rip it off. And then you're done. Now, if you want to make this into a pot holder, because I always tell beginners, it, start with something small and easy instead of taking on this huge project. So if you want to learn how to make this cute little hanging pot holder, just click on the link in the upper right hand corner. It's called how to make a hanging pot holder. And you can follow the instructions for layering and top stitching and putting on the binding. Now, if you want to make other Easter related projects, here is a placemat. Really, really easy. There's fabric on the back and the front. And I used leftover rickrack to go around all the edges, a whole bunch of different colors. So you can use your leftover trims to make this. This is a really fast placemat to use. In that same video, you can learn how to make this cute little table runner. And it has rickrack on it also. So click on the link in the upper right hand corner to learn how to make these really easy placemats. Also, if you want to learn how to just string fabrics together, leftover fabrics, Easter fabrics that you might have, this one is called How to Make a Table Runner and click on that link. So this is a really easy one. You can even put an applique bunny on the end of it. And let me show you one other one that's got all these different Easter fabrics on it. Isn't this cool? All these different leftover fabrics from old projects that I had. And again, think of applying that little bunny rabbit at the end. It'll be really cute on your Easter holiday dinner. Now, if you want to keep informed on all of our future videos, click on subscribe. There's a red button down there at the lower right hand corner of this screen. Red says subscribe. Or click on that round picture of my face floating up in there in the left hand corner. Click on either one of those. YouTube's going to prompt you for that email address. So very important. Enter that information and the next time I have a new video, YouTube will send you a real brief email with a big old button in that center. You click on it and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room and I'll see you next time and happy sewing.